Don't Be Moby Grape. Now, many of you will not remember Moby Grape, but in 1966 and 1967, they were the hottest band in the world. So much so that every record label, I, am, I mean every record label, was trying to sign them and offering them all kinds of things. Ahmet Erdogan and his brother wanted them on Atlantic. Jack Holzman wanted them on Electra. He even told Moby Grape he would move the doors aside for them at his label, and they eventually signed with Columbia. One of the reasons they signed with Columbia is because they wanted to get rid of their manager because they were unhappy with his behavior and his ruling of their careers. That didn't happen, which is sad. And the reason I'm telling you this is this pertains to a lot of the things I've been sharing. Everything that could possibly go wrong for Moby Grape went wrong. Some of it self-inflicted. They did not get rid of their manager. Their manager started showing up to the studio when they recorded their first album, for Columbia and made them sign away their publishing, sign away their record deals, sign away everything under threat that he would cut off the rent to their apartments back in San Francisco. They signed these deals. Why? I don't know. I don't know. I guess you'd have to ask the surviving members, but that's the huge mistake, number one, because like I said, they originally intended to get rid of them. That's why they signed with Columbia. Furthermore, they played the Monterey Pop Festival. They were supposed to go on just before the legendary Otis Renning and what's known as a legendary performance from that festival. But there was an argument over who would go on first, and one of the band just sprouted out and said, oh, we'll go on first. Totally destroyed everything for them. If they had gone on before Otis Redding, who knows, right? Because that was one of the like landmark performances of the film. Furthermore, their manager, the same manager who was abusing every part of their career, would not sign a release for the Pennebakers to be used in the film. So they're not even in the film at all. So it was almost like they weren't there. They went on first, they're not in the film. They're not on the soundtrack. It's horrible, it was just horrendous. And then it continued like this for the next two years and the band basically broke up. The, the manager ended up putting a fake Moby Grape out on the road to make money. So point is, don't be Moby Grape. The band eventually descended into drug abuse and mental illness and, and they, you know, 40 years, 50 years later, they're, they're still trying to reclaim their legacy that the remaining surviving members are trying to still get their rights back. Yes, it's true. It's horrible because they were an amazing, incredible band. So don't be Moby Grape. Don't sign your stuff away. Don't listen to anybody who tells you you got to do this, you got to do that. You know, no, 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 no. Get advice from multiple sources. Do not sign anything. Do not sign away your publishing. Do not sign away your rights. Do not sign away film rights. Whatever it may be, do not let anybody hold anything over you that you feel like, hey, wait a second. Yeah, hey, wait a second tells you something and you should not be so desperate for fame to sign away anything. They could have been one of the greatest bands. They had five songwriters, five singers, all five of them were multi-instrumentalists. And probably many of you don't remember who they are. <laughs>